I'd like to introduce John Spindler, who will introduce our program for today. Thank you, Julianne. Good morning and welcome to the fifth in a series of six classes titled Horse Country. Today we are joined by our speaker, Kylie Robertson, riding instructor at the Hale Equestrian Center in Gainesville. Now, Kylie comes from a family of horsemen raised around horses and barrel races. She started in lead line divisions and has always found horses fascinating. She has a bachelor's degree from the University of Florida in animal sciences with an equine emphasis. Kylie has experience writing and teaching in both English and Western disciplines and loves helping riders of all ages and skills. She began working with hunter jumpers in her senior year of high school and currently competes in speed series, including barrel racing and pole bending. She also spearheaded Hale Equestrian's first, first group lessons dedicated to Western speed events. Please join me in giving a welcome to Kylie today. Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my PowerPoint. So just hold on one second. Perfect, okay, so I can't see you guys. So if you need me, just speak up and I'm gonna go through this. <laughs> All right, so as mentioned, I'm Kylie. I am a riding instructor. It is so much fun working with kids, I love it. I am 21, I love horses. I always have, I grew up with them. Uh, from my introduction, you guys heard a lot of my presentation, actually. So, well, you get to hear it again. I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to go over what it was like growing up with horses and being at horse shows as a little kid. Um, also, my first project mare that got me interested in training and all that. Uh, you're going to meet some of my animals from my little mini farm is what I call it. Um, you're going to see past work, some horses I've worked with in the past from other places that I don't own. You're gonna see my education, where I went to school, college, all that fun stuff. And then you're gonna see some of the stuff I hope to achieve in the future, probably long-term, nowhere near now. So my childhood, you can look at some of these pictures. As you can see, I've been on a horse since I was little, little, probably before I could walk. I am very comfortable on the back of a horse, very familiar, not scared. I can tell you I've fallen more times than I can count. It's just part of the sport. Um, having horses in my backyard, I can look out the window, talk to them, wave at them, and they'll come whinnying up. And it's just a great experience growing up with them. Um, and let me see if it let me zoom in. Here's a picture of me and my dad at one of the first horse shows, I believe. I don't quite remember it being that young. Um, we always brought a grill out. We cooked our own food. It was just an all day event. We turned it into a fun time. Um, my dad is my rock. He's gone everywhere with me, supported me in everything I've ever done. Um, emotionally, I can't say financially uh, with horses. It's just a very expensive hobby, but he's always got my back when I want another one, I guess. <laughs> um, I've loved horses as long as I can remember. My first like big inspiration, and this is gonna sound silly, was watching Heartland growing up. I don't know if you guys have seen Heartland, but it's all horse-based training. Definitely goes back and forth between English and Western riding, has a little bit of everything. Um, but watching Amy in that show made me really, really wanna be a horse trainer and just work with horses, whether they were problem horses, great horses that just needed exercise. Just being involved with horses was what I wanted to do. And I'm so lucky I get to do that here at my house, at my job. It's just amazing. So this is my mare. She was a rescue. She was skin and bones when I got her. She is amazing now. I love her. I can put little kids on her and trust her. Uh, she was three when I got her. So she's now turning 11. Oh, wow. She's getting older now. but. She wouldn't let anybody touch her when I got her. In fact, that bottom picture down here, she there's a gate right behind her butt. The first time we brought her out of the field, she jumped right back over that gate and into the field and was like, nope, I'm not having it. Um, that same bottom picture is actually about a year later and she let me bring her out. I could lunge her, I could get on her and we just bonded. And this is one horse I could never ever get rid of. 
um, just the trading aspect of it taught me a lot. And as a 14 year old, when I got her, I did not know much. So I definitely made mistakes and learned from it, just like anything else in life. We're still learning together. She is my heart. I do everything with her. If I want to try something new, she is my go-to. It's just, it's inspiring to learn together with the horse. If you ever get that experience, oh, it is something you can't compare to. Let's see. Oh, she's in training to become a barrel horse. She's got the pattern down. We're just working on the technique and the turning and it's a lot of fun. Let's see. Okay, this one I'm gonna take some time on. These are all my little babies of my mini farm. So let's see if it'll let me zoom in. So I have three horses total and a mini. This is Boulder. He's got a partial blue eye on one side. And I don't think he knows it's blue, but he knows that the animals react a lot faster if he turns that side of his head and glares at them. So he's got a whole personality. Uh, this little dog here, her name's Olive. She's about six months now. So still a little puppy. Very excited. She's the one I was yelling at earlier for barking. Um, let's move over to, I have one goat. Her and the mini came together. So unfortunately their owner died and they needed someone to take them in. So they're both on the older side, but they're super sweet. They've been a part of petting zoos. They're definitely not scared to come out and show you attention in the yard. As you can see, this picture is the mini. Yes, he's very old. I believe he's 26 this year. Um, he's had laser eye surgery and probably everything else you can think of, but he's going strong and they say he's healthy. So I'm proud of him. He definitely has lots of energy to run around the field on cold days. What else do we have? We have Ozzy, he's the old man of the dog. He's 11 this year. He loves having his picture taken. He's very photogenic. He's the only boy dog of my group. So he seems to think he's very lucky in life. Um, very happy. This is Tilly. She's, she was my first baby. Honestly, she was the first dog I got. She's two now. She's got attitude galore. She can, look at you and you'll just know, you can tell what she's thinking. If you upset her, she just glares. Like she's super sweet though and loves attention. We're gonna move over here. The brat, that's what I call baby. She's that rescue mare. See, she's very comfortable with people now. Loves attention, loves being groomed. That is her favorite part of any exercise is being groomed. She definitely likes her mane, like that right where her mane connects to her neck scratch a lot. Moving on, this is my cat, Pip. He was bottle fed from the time he was a day old. His mom rejected him and we're not quite sure why because he's perfectly healthy. The vet says that he was gonna grow to be huge and he definitely did. He's at 15 pounds now. Um, hopefully he won't get any wider. He's full grown. So he's definitely a big baby and he'll let you know when he wants to be held. He does that whole stretch up and I'm, sh I'm sure if he could say the word up, he would, but he meows and looks at you and knows, you know, he wants to be held. This one's Loomis. Um, my grandparents actually got this one and I took him in. He was named after, originally it was Lumos, the Harry Potter spell for light because of how white his hair looked. He's technically a gray because he's got black skin under that white fur, but he is a trip. He will go in your face. In fact, this picture right here is him sticking his head through the car window from one day when he was in the yard because he did not want us to leave. Whoop, skip some, there we go. I think that's everybody on my little mini farm. They're super sweet. I love all of my babies. They're all very spoiled. As you can tell, some of them are fat probably too fat, uh, <laughs> but they're definitely not going hungry here. Let's see, past work with horses. Okay, so from my introduction, you guys kind of heard, I got into the English world my senior year of high school, um, and I really liked it. I set a goal to jump two foot. I hit that goal. Um, now I'm trying to get a little bit better at my technique with the jumping, but it's just not my favorite thing in the world. Some people love it. I guess that's just not my cup of tea. Um, 
I've definitely worked barn jobs since I was in high school, saving up money to pay for my horses, to pay for anything that I could possibly need for them because they're spoiled. So they get lots and lots of goodies. Um, I started working barn jobs when I was about 15 or 16. I would go with friends and help them because they had some. And then eventually I got my own. It was a lot of work. It definitely taught me a lot about work ethic and responsibility and just it was so good to have a job as a younger kid I think um to teach me all that stuff that I probably wouldn't have known until after I graduated high school uh luckily my senior year when I did get that job with hunter jumpers it was really like eye-opening you could see there's a whole different world out there that I had no clue of because I grew up western and culture oh, sorry culturally the western world is very different from the English world just in different mindsets and competitiveness and and there, there is competitiveness in both worlds I will just I mean this in the sweetest way the western world is a little bit meaner when it comes to certain things whether it comes from mean faces or just little snide comments um, but I still loved it growing up and that's just certain people it's not everybody every sport has a sourpuss unfortunately um, working with these jumpers, I met some really big horses in my life. Um, this guy up here in the top right, his name is Lucas. That's also him in the left with his bridle on. He was 17.2 hands, meaning that was from his withers to the ground. So the withers where the neck meets the back, it's not even to the top of his head. And he towered over me. We loved calling him the pogo stick horse because lunging him was always an adventure watching him bounce up and down around and then but he was so pretty going over jumps and this horse could jump easily four foot on, an, on a good day like I would only ever warm him up I never had the courage to jump anything bigger than two foot uh, but my boss at the time she was like yep I'm gonna go over it and I'm like okay you go for it and she did she made it look easy like she was flying super smooth no issues made it easy and I was like Ooh, that's awesome I wish I had a video to show you that's how smooth it was um after I graduated I started at UF and I stuck with English for a little bit um this guy down here legend has a pink halter on he taught me a lot he was a really good beginner horse at my lesson barn that I was working at and training at um such a sweetheart helped a lot with technique because if you didn't do it right he was not going to let you get away with it so that helped a lot. Um, he was also one of the only true white horses I've ever met in my life, meaning he has pink skin under all that white fur and sunburns were always an issue along with those pretty blue eyes that he has always had to have a fly mask on, could not let the sun get there. Cause they just, they can't see quite as well with blue eyes. So that's almost like they were kind of blinded by the bright light. Um, so I had many people at horse shows ask me why he had a fly mask on. They're like, why are you blinding him? I'm like, I'm not blinding him. He can see. I promise. Um, but he's a sweetheart. Honestly, I don't think I have a bad thing to say about any of the horses I've worked with. I've been really, really lucky and fortunate to work with these horses to help me learn, help them learn. It's been great. Um, after three years of hunter jumpers, I kind of switched back to Western and started competing barrels again at local speed shows down in Williston. That's where it's the easiest to get to. It's down the road from my house, about 30 minutes, not too far. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. You get to see some of the kids get in there. And I brought my first group last weekend from Hale and they did amazing. Oh, I should have added a picture with all their ribbons. They definitely cleaned up and made me so, so proud. Um, competing is just so much fun. I grew up in a very, very competitive family. I am a middle child of six. So we're always trying to see who can win, whether it's racing to the mailbox or playing a board game in the kitchen table. So very competitive family. I also get to see my girls compete this weekend down at Accountant on Mercy Ranch. So I'm so excited to see what they bring this time now that they know what to expect. Uh, after switching back, I got a job as a riding instructor at Girl Scouts. That was such a fun, fun time. Again, working with kids has always been amazing for me. I know some people hate it, some people love it. I definitely love working with kids. They teach you so many things. They say things so, they say funny things. Like they don't think, they just say what's on their mind and you kind of just roll with it. Uh, most of the time it's good stuff. Sometimes they're a little negative and you gotta help them be a good sport. But all in all, 
great kids, great experience. Um, Girl Scouts taught me a lot. They ha definitely have a lot more protocol procedures in place than some of the other places I worked with, a lot more paperwork. I do say that that is not my favorite part of any job. Paperwork is not fun. I'm sure most people will agree with me. Paperwork is not fun. Um, after, hmm, let me think, no. So I used Girl Scouts as my internship to graduate from UF. So I got to make a whole presentation about it and present it to the graduating class at our seminar, our career seminar. And that was so much fun. I don't think I've ever made a poster that big before. And it took me days to like perfect it. Like I'm a perfectionist, so I will move stuff around until it looks good, just right. And I'm also a procrastinator. So that's not a great combination because then I'm stressing the night before and eh, it works out. After finishing at Girl Scouts, I moved on to Hale Equestrian and I have loved every second of working there. I've gotten more hands-on training experience with some of the babies. I've worked with some amazing kids and watched them progress farther than I could ever imagine. They're just so great um, working with these horses, seeing how each horse has their own quirks and personalities is great because then the kids have to learn how to work with them and not against them and it makes them better riders it makes me a better rider and honestly being a riding instructor has helped me so much because I can implement what I'm teaching my kids so it's like hearing it out loud showing somebody else I have to make myself better because now somebody's looking up to me and honestly being looked up to is it's hard but it's also great because it makes you want to be better um let's see i'm going to introduce some of these horses here so in this bottom right corner this is the first yearling i ever worked with at hale equestrian or i guess technically this farm's eclipse sport horses um he got sold not too long ago we called him ralph he's a sweetheart wanted attention all the time you can see he's very tall so he was only a year old in this picture and was towering over me so he's going to be a big boy when he's full fully grown um legend we already talked about the true white with the blue eyes super sweet does all around everything western english great lesson horse great at teaching technique um down here is samson he was one he's the only roper i've ever worked with but man this horse could move despite his large body he could turn on a dime he would move fast oh he was so good up here we have Thunder. He was one of the Girl Scout horses. The first one I rode to get, I had to ride all of them to learn their personalities to assign Girl Scouts to. Um, he was by far my favorite. Easily the smartest one in the herd. Um, I love smart horses. Sometimes it's hard to deal with because they have opinions. Um, sometimes they're just like, okay, I'll do this like that because I understand. This really pretty sunset picture. Her name is Sandy. She's also from Hale. She's one of our lesson horses. She has come a long ways. One of our other instructors, Bailey, has worked really hard on her and she looks amazing. And then I'm back to the jumpers up top. That's Lucas, the pogo stick horse. My education. I used to think growing up, all I was ever going to do was school because I was just, I was always a bookworm. I loved schoolwork. My dad said I was the smartest dumb person he ever knew because I had no common sense, but I love school. It just came easy. It came naturally to me. And I started dual enrollment in eighth grade. So like that last year of middle school, I was already taking college courses and I managed to finish that degree early so that I could graduate high school early. And man, my parents were all for it. Free college. Yes, it was great. Um, with as many kids in our families we have, it was always nice to have some free classes in there, get them out of the way. I uh, went to UF as a freshman in 2018 oh. after I graduated. I got to participate in UF skater band and perform in front of 90,000 people. That was a rush. If you guys can't tell, I'm not a shy person. I love getting out there talking and performing. I don't know anything about competing. Performing is just a rush to me. I love adrenaline. Um, performing on UF's color guard is one of the most thrilling things I think I've ever done because I've never performed in front of that many people. And it's just, it's mind blowing how many people are watching you for a halftime show or even a pregame show. There's just so many people in the stands. The stadium is huge when you're on the field. Um, getting accepted to UF as a freshman is amazing in itself because sometimes their acceptance rates 
sound really good, but it's kind of hard to get in, especially when you already have college credits to transfer. They have to make sure you have the specific classes intact and transferable credits, if that makes sense. Um, and luckily it worked out for me. I got to get into the best program in my opinion is the animal science program. Uh, lots of amazing professors, lots of amazing students and teaching assistants. Um, I learned so much from them and I continually use it in everyday life. Um, having an equine emphasis is so amazing in my job because I get to watch out for the little things like um, muscle building and nerve and certain areas. If a horse gets injured, I can be like aware that there's something sensitive there. Just learning all that stuff in college helps when they say it's some of the best years it really is some of the best years undergrad is so much fun um i originally chose this path not only because i loved horses but because i was really interested in going to vet school um but going through undergrad you kind of realize what you want what you don't want and i really didn't want to go to another four years of school and go into that much debt so I still get to put my stuff to my knowledge and what I learned in school to use at my current job, any jobs I've had in the past. So I really love this degree. I actually plan on going back sometime in the next couple months, maybe this summer to start my nursing degree since I have all the basic education done and I will become a double bachelor student with a nursing degree and then an degree in animal science. So that'll be fun. I put this picture of this baby foal here um, on here because that was my favorite time by far in any class. I was part of the foaling class. So I had to drive to Ocala twice a week. I was there for six hours. Um, I believe this was probably around 3 a.m. So I went from midnight to 6 a.m. twice a week and mare watch so I could see if they were gonna have their kid that night or what the plan was. And luckily one of the nights I was there, she decided to have her foal. So that was an amazing experience just watching that. And if you don't know about foaling, it happens very quick from the time the water breaks, they have that baby within 30 minutes, very quick experience. Um, and then unfortunately we couldn't get her in the barn. She just didn't want to move. So she had hers in the field. And then once the baby was up moving around, we moved them both into the barn, into the um, foaling stall so that she, the mom could clean the baby up and just get used to walking around so that they weren't in the field with any other horses, just a safer plan. Um, what's next? Oh, this top right picture is my best friend. She has supported me through everything. She's always been there through the stressed out mental breakdowns to the happiest days of my life. I love her. She's amazing. She's actually having a baby soon. I'm so excited to be an aunt. Okay, so future goals. I kind of talked to, touched on this a little bit. Getting my nursing degree is always, I don't know why I'm so interested in it. I want to be a trauma nurse. I just find that stuff so interesting. Like I have a strong stomach. So any of that gore and blood just doesn't bother me. I think that's also part of the reason I wanted to go to vet school. Just the surgery side of it uh, is the most interesting part. Um, by doing that it just kind of sets me up because the medical field is always in demand of new hires and new nurses and I would always have some kind of income so that I could take care of my horses take care of my farm um, but also still get to do stuff that I enjoy that I love I also eventually want to save up and start my own training or boarding business sometime way down the road I'm nowhere near ready for that but always been a plan on it in the back of my mind. Um, and then just getting better as a rider and barrels competing more. I kind of want to start going to bigger shows eventually, get my mare out there open competing, just see how she does. If it's what she likes, if she doesn't like it, we'll find something else. Um, just putting myself out there more to compete in that bigger stuff instead of overthinking it. So the local stuff is awesome. It's fun to get out there. I just need to practice, practice, practice and get a little bit more competitive, I guess. I threw in some fun facts about horses and myself just so I could use this degree a little bit more because man, do they throw lots of facts at you that you never knew. Um, horses can't breathe through their mouths, so they're obligate nose breathers. So they can eat through their mouth and drink through their mouth and they can actually exhale air through it, but they can't breathe in through it. Um, they also can't throw up, so anything they eat has to come out the other end. 
That's why when someone says their horse is colicking, it's like a fatal stomach ache. It just sometimes it's impaction and their food gets hard and gets stuck. It's not fun, but they can't throw it up. So you got to make sure they're always drinking water, constantly have fresh water available so that they're easily hydrated and nothing can happen, hopefully. Um, horses also have a really, really good view. So they can see about 340 degrees around them out of the 360. They have two blind spots directly in front of them and directly behind them. So in line with the forehead and in line with the tail, they can't see. They can easily turn their head and see you, but if they're standing straight, they can see both sides. It's called binocular vision. They have two views, so they can see two things at once, or they can merge it to monocular vision and see about four feet in front of them. Let's see, seasonal shedding. I find this really interesting. So they start shedding based on changes in daylight hours. So if there's less daylight hour, they'll have more of a thicker coat. Um, you'll see them look fuzzier. I see lots of people refer to them as big teddy bears. Um, whereas if there were longer days, if the sun was out longer, so when change, the time change happens, all that thick fur will start to shed and they'll get their summer coat. It'll be thinner, it'll be smoother, shinier. Um, but it's not based on temperature, which I always found interesting. So I was like, well, if it's cold, you think they'd grow more hair, but it's based on daylight hours. And then another fun fact, this one's about me. I've also worked with emus. Emus used to freak me out. They were scary. Their eyes are creepy. Um, but now I have a lot of fun with them. They're super sweet up in this top corner here. Those are some of the emus I worked with. That's um, Millie and Tilly. They had all their names rhymed. I don't know what their owner was. They were just wanted them to rhyme. Millie and Tilly were super sweet. And I actually got a call the other day saying they finally started laying eggs. They're going to try to start hatching them. Um, super sweet animals love attention these things can run fast um, having a horse they live in a pasture with some ponies and some minis so anytime the minis are running around or the ponies are running around these emus think they're racing so you'll see an emu zoom through the field to pass that horse just so they can win um, emus are a lot of fun and honestly you take care of them the same way you would take care of a horse they can eat horse food they get the same dewormer the vet even says treat them similar with that digestive tract. Um, I've worked with cattle, which is that top right picture. Those are, right now, those are my best friend's cows. I drove over to her house the other night and took a picture because I don't have any cows right now. Um, we are getting more soon. We just didn't have the room and we didn't see the need. Um, but working with cows is fun. They're definitely very different from horses. A lot easier to maintain and feed because you don't have to be quite as picky about what you give them their digestive will break down just about anything um, versus a horse where I feel like horses find ways to hurt themselves they're just accident prone I guess um, for such a large animal you don't think they'd be as fragile as they are but they seem to find ways to surprise you um, another fun fact about me is I also know how to play the flute it was the instrument I chose growing up in middle school and high school I just thought it was so pretty and I learned how to play it and it was so much fun um, and then you guys already know I'm from a large family but I threw that in there as the last one um, the fact the fun fact about this is I'm the only one left still riding horses so they help me take care of my horses they help me load and transport um, but I'm the only one that still rides. I have tried talking my sister into it, but she's like, no, not really into feeling it. Um, this horse down here, these two horses, actually, this is Lucas and Lucian. You've met Lucas already. Um, Lucas and Lucian are very funny. They love water. As you can see, he's kind of playing with the water. I was spraying in the air with his lip. Uh, Lucian, as I was saying, horses are very fragile and find ways to hurt themselves. He always had to have standing wraps on because he would run around and his um, fetlocks and pasterns would get a little swollen. So by adding standing wraps, which you can see I'm putting on here, it just helps relieve that pressure and give them a little bit more support, kind of like um, a brace that we would wear to just take some of that extra weight, pressure, anything causing it pain off of them. And then let's see, what else do we have? Ooh, questions. Does anybody have any questions? about horses, about myself, anything. Well, Kylie, since I'm facilitating the group, we'll get it rolling. Uh, I have a question. 
What's the okay. typical What's the typical work day for you at Hale Equestrian Center? Okay. Um. So I get to teach different kids every day. So let's see. One day, typically, I start in the early afternoon times, and I go there. I'm always thirty minutes early before a lesson. Sometimes I'm running late, but I'm usually there before the kid is. I will pull their horse out for whichever course I match horses with um, riding skill, kids attitude, if they're going to mesh well with the horse's personality. I just choose what horse I think will work best for them. I help that kid groom and tack up. And then I spend a whole hour teaching them different little techniques that they can learn to ride just to be better, be more confident in the saddle. Um, and I do that honestly all day and get lots of kids and I love teaching them. They're all very different. So you have to adapt to their learning style and word things a little differently depending on who you're teaching. Um, on the days that I have a little bit of extra time. So if I have all morning open, I will head to Eclipse Sport Horses and start working with the babies there. I get to work on halter breaking and leading around. I'm now working with some um, three year or two year olds coming three year olds and three year olds coming four year olds. I get to work with them, hopefully put first rides on some of them lunge them around, get them used to being interacted with to become hopefully better, easier horses to ride and to work with, um, whether to be sold or to be used as lesson horses in the future. Um, that's honestly, that's my favorite part of the day is just training those horses, spending one-on-one -on -one time with them, seeing how they learn, what they like, what they dislike. They have personalities just like each of us um, and it works out. So training, lessons, it's a very long day, but very rewarding, very fulfilling. I love it. That's how a day goes. I wake up, I feed mine, go to lessons, go to training, probably come back for lessons, go home, feed mine, <laughs> shower and pass out. <laughs> okay, and we'll see you in action next week at the field trip. Uh, will you be showing us how you do uh, any uh, barrel racing at that time? Will there be sort of a Western? Theme. Um, if I have time for sure, I'm not quite sure how that's going to run yet, but I will definitely keep that in mind if you guys get there and I will pull a horse and see what we can do. More questions from our audience and class. I have a question. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. Um, I just, I have no background in this. And I just, after all these sessions and watching the horses and everything that they do, their, the racing and the competitions and everything, do, do the horses, are they happy doing all this hard work? I mean, like, can you tell? Or sometimes yes. I feel like it's too hard for them, but I just don't, I'm so naive, you know? Yeah, very expressive. You can kind of watch them. Their ears tell a lot, their eyes actually, you can see when they're nervous, when they're excited. Um, typically you can you cannot make a thousand pound animal do something they dislike. Um, if they don't want to do it, they're just, gonna, they're not going to do it. Um, typically you can look up videos of horses doing their job and you can see them run without their riders because that's what they enjoy. They like running fast. They like doing this stuff. Um, they put lots of time and effort into it. And if they're constantly fighting you on doing the same thing, either they don't understand what's going on or they dislike it and you need to find them something else to do. Mm -hmm. um, horses, there are people out there with jobs who their whole job is to come see how a horse is responding to what they're doing. They can see if they're happy, if they're upset. They're very expression-based animals, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, kind of like, a dog can growl if they're upset or threatened or anything. A horse will pin its ear straight back to its neck at whatever's coming at them. If they're angry, upset, scared, whatever. And that just warns you stay back. They might strike out. You don't want to get hurt on accident, whether they're scared or angry. Um, but yeah, they're very easy. Some are harder than others, but for the most part, they're pretty easy to see if they like their job or not. You're the first one out after all these sessions who mentioned Heartland, which I loved when that was on. And was that pretty accurate? All their training yes. and work? There is some points that I'm not thrilled with, like some of the riding's a little iffy, um, but otherwise it's pretty accurate. Um, the way they explain things, most of the diet stuff is pretty accurate. Um, 
because after watching it growing up, I'll rewatch it every now and then and comparing it to what I've learned in school, what I've learned on the job, like on day-to-day -day basis, it's, it really does apply. It's very accurate. Um, they kind of put it in e easier terms to understand. And that's what I like about the show. It's very family friendly and easy to understand. Um, but yeah, it's pretty accurate. Like I said, some of the writing's a little iffy, but most of the time it's, it's really good. Any more questions from the class, uh, Julianne? I don't see anything. Any comments? Ooh, any comments? <laughs> you guys are quiet. Yeah, that you've done a great job of uh, teaching and explaining things. Usually, uh, some additional information needed. Um, I think I think the big thing is enthusiasm. You're such an enthusiastic person. Uh, we just we just kind of get enthralled with what you're guiding us through. Oh, thank you. And I'd say, uh, Regina, I know you're in the audience there. Um, it looks like you get you made a great hire. Um, she would be a wonderful employee because her heart and soul is in it and she cares about the kids and the horses, both. Do you teach any adults at Hale Equestrian Center? Yes, I do. I um, have an adult lesson mostly for the farm assistants working around the farm on Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays. Um, recently, I've had more adults join it that don't work there and that's always fun because they get to meet each other similar ages um and they all ride differently they ride western some ride english um they all have different riding styles and you kind of just have to work on what they bring to the table and making it safer more comfortable for them and it's just it's a lot of fun teaching the adults too because sometimes i'll teach someone older than me and i'm like oh i don't know how to do this and then we just kind of start talking and it just flows and it's so easy um, they want to learn and that's what makes my job so easy is they want to learn they're willing to listen um, adults kind of pick up a little bit faster than kids so they progress a little bit faster for the most part um, but it, it's so much fun teaching a wide variety of ages well uh, if there aren't any more questions I want to thank you personally for your fascinating presentation today Kylie and we look forward to seeing you in person and in in action next week at our field trip. Yay. Yay. <laughs> uh, now some final reminders about the field trip. The bus will depart from Okamak at 9.30. Uh, the program is from 10 to 11, uh, with the bus leaving the center shortly after 11 o'clock. We should arrive back at Okamak before uh, 11.30. And here are some, some reminders again. I hit these last week, but a few people uh, are in attendance today that weren't here last week. So the program will be entirely outside. So please dress accordingly if it's cold in the morning. Walking around the center is largely on unpaved ground, not conducive for scooters and wheelchairs due to sandy areas. A restroom facility is a handicap access porta potty. And for the writing demonstration viewing, uh, Standing by the fence is best. However, chairs will be available if desired. And you will have time after the program and the demonstrations to get acquainted with the horses and we'll have some carrots provided so you can give them a treat. So again, we hope to see you next week here on the field trip. Departure time again, 9.30 next Thursday, February 17th. Have a very nice day and thanks again, Kylie. Don, you might have said this and I missed it, but we are encouraging all of our town ILR members to meet us there. Did you say that? I'm, I I didn't. I failed to say that. I did last week though. Yeah. Uh, in fact, some people asked about directions, uh, how to get to Hale Equestrian Center. It's on Tower Road at the entrance to go into Hale, Hale Plantation, the downtown area. Uh, right across the road from Wiles Elementary School and just up the road from Kanapaha Middle School. So those are some hints about where to go there, uh, easily accessible off of uh, Archer Road and easily accessible off of uh, Newberry Road coming from downtown Gainesville. That's it. And we hope to see you next week. Have a nice day. Thank you again, Kylie and Regina. See y'all later.
Bye. Thank you so much.